As a brand, Poco's general slogan is everything you need, nothing you don't. But how does that vibe with a phone slogan, the apex of power? Fan favorite Poco is back in the gadget lab. They sent over the new F4 GT for me to take on a test drive and share some thoughts. This is very familiar, but also manages to feel a little fresh considering the Poco label. I've spent a lot of time with the Poco F3. I never got to play with the F3 GT. And recently we've been checking out phones like the M4 and the X4 Pro. It's an interesting time for Poco as we see more of a push into the 5G. And we're trading parts around to keep prices in check, but the core mission remains. Seek out a demographic of consumer and deliver the best current flavor of what that consumer might want at an aggressively low price. The F4 GT reinforces that idea with a focused option for gamers. That's enough about the Poco philosophy. We've got to get into this hardware because this thing is built to play games. We've got a vibrant, 1080p display at 120 hertz refresh, and which supports faster touch sampling, how quickly the screen can interact with your fingertips. A power button fingerprint sensor, currently my favorite biometric security. It's the fastest way you can directly interact with your phone, get it unlocked. The IR blaster remains, which is another handy feature for families managing multiple TVs or AV gear. This is a dual SIM model, but there is no SD card expansion. And I was sad to see that there is no 3.5 millimeter port for cabled audio. I'm definitely biased towards headphone jacks in general, but I think they make even more sense on phones targeting gaming. I might need to cover this a little more in depth on the Patreon, but thankfully there is still a DAC in this phone. This does support passive pass-through audio dongles. So it won't matter if you plug in a dongle DAC or a pass-through cable, you'll be able to connect headphones, but the speakers here are absolutely fantastic. It was one of the little bullet points on the press release, but quad speakers, these are legit. This may be the best sounding phone I've heard all year. It's never been my thing. I'm not super into waxing poetic on phone design, but this is one of the better looking gaming phones that I've handled. I think it's kind of neck and neck with last year's Black Shark. You know, I like that there's a clear continuity of brand. You know, you can look at an F3 and then look at this F4, and even for some of the more aggressive edges, I think most phone fans would spot the family resemblance. It's a gaming phone, it's a little edgy, but it's not entirely Mountain Dew fueled. The little lightning bolt cut out for the flash by the camera, that's kind of adorable. But what matters more is how the hardware fits together on this frame. Wear an ROG or a Red Magic might opt for touch sensitive areas to mimic controllers on the side of the phone. The F4 GT uses magnetic hardware switches. You slide out, they pop up, and you have proper tactile clicky activated switches. I can do this all night. It's a crazy bit of engineering to pack onto a phone. But that's what I really dig though. Phones are way more fun when there's a specific focus on who that phone is for. Mapping some controls to hardware triggers helps significantly in improving phone gameplay. And unlike some mobile games that don't know what to do with a controller, these triggers are practically universal. As you tell the phone, where it should mimic a press on the screen. I'm totally about to do some infomercial hand acting here. But where I love games like twin stick shooters, I hate having to claw grip a phone to move and aim and shoot and use a power up. Triggers completely fix that ergonomic issue. And that brings us to the power conversation. I don't read off the spec sheet in my videos, I trust you can read. So if you need to see what's going on here with the hardware, pause this video, hit up GSM Arena, and then come on back for the rest of the conversation. After using phones like the Black Shark 4 and the Poco F3, 
I was a little surprised to see the F4 GT pack the top option from Qualcomm. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is a bit of a controversial SoC this year. It's insanely powerful, but it runs warm, and it can nuke your battery life if you let it run unchecked. Labeling something a gaming device brings certain expectations of performance to price. Like a gaming laptop, we expect it to be more powerful than a mainstream skinny laptop, but it should also be cheaper than a professional grade mobile workstation. The F4 GT leans into a similar conversation. We're landing the top of the line chip from Qualcomm with better than average RAM and storage on a phone with a very fast screen. Now, if you've been following my videos for a while, just because we can show off some Bigly benchmark scores, that really doesn't have a direct relationship to real world performance. Those numbers don't really mean anything. And this is one of those phones where I think it matters that we compare on a variety of gaming titles. This SoC can run hot and draw a lot of power from the battery. So we should absolutely keep our expectations in check. Well-optimized games for mobile like Dundara and Dead Cells have zero issues pinning performance above 90 frames per second. Even after extended gameplay, we can still see 120 hertz. One of my new torture tests for graphics is a game called Wilderless and from the team that made Bright Ridge. You have PC-like options to dial in quality settings. And right now, when you max everything out, I mean, this is a fantasy exploration game that'll hover around 20 frames per second. The F4 GT is right in line with other 8 Gen 1 phones this year. Unfortunately, one of my heavier PC ports, Alien Isolation, is currently crashing on my favorite gaming phone, so we can't really show off that kind of heavy lifting. And like other Xiaomi and Poco phones, they really do not like some of my favorite arcadey twin stick shooters. I normally show Undead Horde, but even going back to an older game like Neon Chrome, I mean, this game runs well on much older devices, but it can turn into a slideshow on Pocos. Something kind of funky happens when the game hits the GPU and the GPU is capable of spiking to a really high frame rate for a brief period of time, but then left unchecked, the thermal throttling then causes it to crash to a much lower frame rate. And you spike and crash and spike and crash. And to me, that's way more distracting than if you had a phone that was kind of managing that performance a little bit more, but keeping a consistently higher frame rate. That's a very specific example with one of my favorite titles. I'd say otherwise, we're in very good shape, all other aspects being considered. There is no exotic or active cooling, so performance feels about the same as on a traditional premium tier phone. The big difference is hardware to improve gaming control. And that hardware is almost too good, where a game like Lego Star Wars just thinks you have a controller attached and there is no option to go back to touchscreen control. It's a consistent mark for phones this year, however, that running graphics intense games hard, the phone is going to get noticeably warmer to the touch, and the screen, we're actually trying to get heat out through the screen that might be a little uncomfortable to use. This kind of holds true for other real world apps that I might use to test performance. Yeah, the F4 GT is about mid-pack for other 8 Gen 1 phones that I've reviewed. Against a phone like the Red Magic, we can see a significant difference in performance when we add an exotic hardware solution like active cooling. Now from performance to power, it's always trickier detailing gaming phones because I think it's fair to expect more demanding use. This is not average consumer. Casually burping out a stat like screen on time means something a lot different when the screen is being used to play a demanding game rather than just streaming some video. I would rate my early use on the F4 GT as very good for the more mainstream phone stuff, and then we should expect battery to drain much, much faster while gaming. Again, there is a good argument to use a phone like this even for more basic media consumption. The speakers are fantastic. No matter how demanding your needs might be, you'll of course need to recharge the phone, and there's a brilliant 120 watt charger in the box. I mean, it's just silly to put out phones with real, super fast charging, but then make consumers jump through hoops to buy extra accessories to support those standards. I used to run a whole bunch of those battery top-off tests, like how much will the battery charge in 30 minutes? But when you get a low battery warning, 
It only takes about 10 minutes plugged in to get you back up over 80%. It's really not much instructive trying to time how many seconds faster a charger for this might be. But this is also a gaming focused device. And this is where we might have a small concern for heavier use. Can't find a charge separation feature on the Poco F4 GT. Someone down in the comments, please correct me if I'm missing some random setting buried deeper in the phone, but it's not in the battery stats. ROG, Red Magic, this is a feature most visible on a Sony. You can tell the phone to not charge the battery when it's plugged in. This is different than a charge protection buffer. For a charge separation feature, the power only goes to the phone operation, the battery just stays put. No matter how aggressively you're using the phone with charge separation, the battery should neither be charging nor discharging. I just recently gamed for over two hours on a Red Magic and the battery dipped 1%. A charge separation feature reduces wear and tear on the battery, it reduces the number of charge cycles you put the phone through, and it helps the phone perform better by reducing heat from the battery. This Poco is exactly the kind of phone that would benefit the most from a feature like that. Okay, wrapping up this look at the hardware, the camera performance is in pretty good shape. Again, this feels very similar to some of the other phones I've used that were manufactured using a similar parts bin. You know, the main camera is a solid all-rounder and we have plenty of horsepower to drive 4K video. There's no 8K. I'm honestly not sure how much that matters to folks in general or on a gaming phone specifically, if you're all out there shooting the 8K cinema video, I'm feeling okay about these cameras. Again, we've gotta find some areas where we can rein in costs, <laughs> we can live up to that Poco label, and include some special, some gaming specific hardware. I don't think anyone's gonna be too shocked that this phone isn't gonna top my list for content creators. But I don't feel the target audience are going to be punished by this camera setup. I wanna be fair because I don't really think we're facing any tremendous compromises. It's really not hard getting a fun image out of this phone. When we can entertain gaming phones selling for significantly higher prices, then maybe we'll see a company staple uh, you know, the, the most bleeding edge cameras to the back of a device and keep all the gaming goodness too, which is probably where we should start closing out this video. I've been rambling long enough. A first look at the Poco F4 GT, and there's a lot to like here. You know, it stands up with Black Shark, Red Magic, and ROG as a phone with a particular focus. There are people out there who might not want to buy a portable console and a phone to carry around all the time. Depending on the kinds of games you like to play, this has the Venn diagram overlap to satisfy high performance phone junkies, content consumption, and mobile gaming fans. We've got a slightly different balance of pros and cons, which I think is interesting. I think it's exciting that we're seeing a bit more of a spectrum of devices, even when we're talking about a niche category like gaming phones. Someone choosing the highest tier of performance might be looking at something with active cooling. There are options that perform better for audio. There are different internals, RAM and storage configurations, different types of screens, different solutions for buttons and triggers. And that's before we get into some of the more mainstream devices and accessories for gaming like portable displays and Bluetooth controllers. In a really quiet way, mobile phone gaming is the healthiest it's ever been. And we have a few distinctly different options to shop, which really maximize that mobile playtime. I'm really glad to see it. Poco walks into this with a strong price to performance solution. I will of course leave some links down below for more information on the Poco F4 GT where you might shop one of these bad boys online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel. All of the support lately has been rocking my socks. Everybody who's been hitting the links in the descriptions, you've been checking out the website, or if you've been joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is the coolest collection of tech and gaming and media nerds in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, on social and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.